It was a typical Thursday evening that was about to become not typical at all. My wife, Anna, and I were working together in the kitchen as we often do when cooking dinner. She was chopping onions while I was cutting cheese and ham into small cubes for our omelette when she said something that caught my attention, Brad, we've been married for almost seven years, and we've always been completely honest with each other, haven't we? I stopped cutting the ham and replied, of course, we agree. It was one of the most important parts of our relationship before we said yes to each other. She turned away from the counter and looked at me thoughtfully. I had met someone. Suddenly, the hair on the back of my neck stood up like I'd just been electrocuted. You met someone? What does that mean that you've met someone? I asked, even though I was deathly afraid, I already knew the answer, a guy at work a really nice guy. I had lunch with him, I'm assuming there's more to the story. So carry on, are you telling me that you met a really nice guy at work that you had lunch with and you like him, maybe really like him? A guilty expression flashed across her face and she looked away from me, nodded her head and said very quietly, yes. Suddenly, I didn't want an omelette or anything at all, in fact, I was starting to feel nauseous but I had to keep talking. I dropped the knife on the cutting board and put both hands on the table to keep from falling over. How far did things go between you and this really nice guy? There was a lot of tension in my voice, and she retreated to the counter. Just had lunch every day for a few weeks and had dinner last week when you had that late night business meeting. Did you two hold hands, kiss, do any heavy petting? Her face went pale and she nodded again. We kissed. Disgusting bile was coming up my throat, and I was close to choking on it. Did you have sex with him? She glanced at me quickly and shook her head negatively. That stunned me, and I had to push back my chair and sit down. So you haven't slept with him yet, but you're planning to. A curt nod. I guess I am. He wants me to go away with him for the weekend. And you're going? Yeah. I don't want to upset you, but I need to figure out what he means to me. I'm sorry, Brad. I know you're hurting, and I hate it, but I told him I'd go with him. Couldn't sneak out without telling you. We've always been so honest with each other about everything. Can I ask where you two are going? Las Vegas. Sharing a room, I assume? He says he booked a room. Big spender. He thinks very highly of me. I'm sure he does. When are you leaving? Tomorrow morning. Wow. You sure waited till the last second to tell me. I waited before I hurt you. Because I had to be absolutely sure I needed to. I almost laughed but it sounded more like a stifled sob. That was very thoughtful of you, Anna, does he know you're married? Yes. Of course he does. I always wear wedding rings. Do me a favor, don't wear them when you're in his bed in Las Vegas. Brad, I talk about you all the time when I'm with him. Great, and I'm sure you've had lots of great things to tell him about me. Like, I'm as good a guy as he is, but I'm a little boring in bed and I leave nail clippings on the carpet and lots of other little negative things that made you leave me. She looked shocked. I've never said anything bad about you, Brad, but not enough to stop you from going away with him for a sex-filled weekend. You love me, but, apparently, you haven't lately have you? No. Oh, I don't know. I'm confused, so you jump into the arms of a really nice man who knows you're married, but doesn't care. This is me clarifying the circumstances so you don't get confused. Right? A few days and nights in Vegas in his arms and in his bed to clarify everything you feel about me and him, to let him take possession of your body, which, by the way, you promised exclusively to me years ago, let him have you until you can't stand up. She actually had a few tears rolling down her cheek. I'm on the pill, Brad, so I don't need condoms. Did your really good boyfriend get tested for STDs recently? He's not like that, Brad. He hasn't been with a woman in over two years, that's what he says, but I'll bet you a one million dollars. It's not true. He's after pussy Anna. He sees a beautiful, sexy, married woman, and he wants her. It's the perfect game for guys like him, steal a beautiful, married woman and fuck her, 
make the pathetic husband a cuckold, if I'm right and he hasn't been tested, you may find out that what happens in Vegas may not stay in Vegas, something may follow you home in a very unpleasant way. Is this nice guy your boss? No, he's the boss of my bosses. So you're really selling out, aren't you? No point in climbing the corporate ladder when you can use yourself to slide up a rung that's a few scales above you. I don't know what I'm doing, Brad, but I wanna find out and how rude you're being to me isn't helping, I'm not going to help you go off with another man for a hot weekend of fucking in Vegas, Anna, let me ask you something, if I beg you not to leave, if I get on my knees and beg you to stay here with me, will you do it? She dropped her eyes to the floor and shook her head. I can't Brad, I told Stan I'd go with him, and I can't break my word. At least now I knew his name, wow. I see. You can easily break the sacred vows you made to me seven years ago, but you can't break your promise to Stan, is that true? I'm sorry, Brad. I don't want to hurt you, but I have to do this for me, please try to understand. I realized right away that I had lost her, but my pain and suffering gave me an idea, a parting shot that wouldn't make her change her mind, but might make her think about what her actions would do to us. I stood up and turned toward the basement door. Wait here. I wanna show you something, then I'll get out of your way and you can get ready to go. I went down to the basement and rummaged around until I found the Halloween props I was looking for, then I opened our wall safe, pulled out a piece of paper, took a hammer, and some nails, and carried it into the kitchen. Anna looked at me like I had lost my mind when she saw me dragging the small wooden coffin we were using as Halloween decorations up the stairs. What was that for? Just to have a minute of fun, we've been together a long time. And before we're done, I wanna show you something. I set the three-foot wooden coffin on the kitchen table, dropping the ham and cheese I was working on off the cutting board onto the floor. It's a coffin. Well, a cheap Halloween prop, but it's still a coffin. Here's the lid that goes on the coffin. This is a hammer, and these are nails. When I showed her the hammer, she started to get nervous. And this, I said, showing her the paper I took out of the safe, is our marriage license. I opened the lid of the casket, put our certificate in there, and put the lid back on the casket. Brad, what are you doing? Put our marriage license back where you found it. Why Anna, it doesn't mean anything anymore does it? It's where it belongs in the coffin ready for burial. She started crying again. What are you talking about, Brad? It's proof that we're married that after you walk out that door to be with Stan tomorrow will no longer be true. Now she was starting to lose her mind. Brad, you don't know that. I don't know that. Oh, yes, Anna, but I do know this. Your solution is to go away with Stan. My decision is to divorce you. Now sit down and listen for a minute. Our marriage license is in the coffin where it belongs. I took a nail and put it on the corner of the coffin lid. Bang. 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 I drove it through the lid and into the coffin. The sound was so loud in this small room that it startled Anna and she jumped up. This is the first nail. It represents the time you went to lunch and dinner with a really nice guy, Stan. I took another nail and put it on the next corner. Bye. This is the second nail. It represents the passionate kisses you shared with really nice guy, Stan. Anna's eyes were big and her mouth began to quiver as she looked at me. Bah. Bang. Bang. I hammered the third nail into the penultimate corner. This nail symbolizes your agreement to go away with really nice guy Stan to Vegas for the weekend. I picked up the last nail and applied it to the lid in the fourth and final corner of the coffin. Bang. I hit it once to get it firmly embedded in the wood. This is the fourth nail, Anna, you've heard the expression about something being the final nail in the coffin lid, the nail that seals it for all eternity that irrevocably completes the fate of whoever or whatever is inside. That last nail is only partially hammered in, but our marriage is in that coffin. So when you walk out that door in the morning to go to Las Vegas with that really nice guy, Stan, that last nail will be hammered into the coffin and our life together will be over irreconcilably and irrevocably. That's not what you mean, Brad. 
you can't throw us away over one indiscretion, I'm not throwing us away, Anna. You are. I love you with every fiber of my being, you are the most beautiful, sexiest woman I have ever known, and it has been an honor and joy to have you as my wife for the past seven years, no. I'm not the one leaving us, if I could, I would climb into that coffin with the proof of our marriage and be buried with it, oh, and just to satisfy my curiosity and drive your dagger deeper into my heart, I have to ask. If I look in the luggage your packing did take, will I find some sexy panties and bras and maybe a beautiful negligee you bought just for this occasion? Anna didn't answer. She just continued to cry quietly. But the look on her face told me the answer, that's what I thought. I'm leaving right now. I don't want to be here to witness your final act of betrayal. I'll go back and get everything I need to get through the next couple weeks after you leave with Stan, if you have extra time in Vegas, though I suspect you'll be too busy warming Stan's bed to think about anything else, but still, you might think about what items in the house you'd like to keep. I won't be here when you get back, but my lawyer will contact you in a week or two. I grabbed my jacket, walked out the door, got in my car, and drove away. I had just experienced the worst night of my life and I felt dead and completely numb. I had no idea where I was going, and I didn't care, I just needed to leave.